So, hey guys, what's up? Okay. So, I decided, I mean, you know, I told you I will um, take a few days off. And that is true. That is actually true this time. Yeah, this time I really thought about things I put actually into the queue for later. And I will, all, I will do all those things now. Uh, I'm actually started already with my anime binge watch session yesterday. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I continue today. I will also do some other stuff. I thought about XCOM. I will indeed uh, make a one XCOM run uh, off stream. Off stream. Yeah. I thought about it, and I will. Um, I just enjoy it too much. Like you don't want to see that. I'm sitting in front of like the PC, and I I, I enjoy the units. And sometimes I stare ten minutes at the unit because I'm so happy how it, how it's doing and all that stuff. So. You don't want to see that, but uh, it makes me happy. So um, we'll do those things. Yeah. Um, so I can already put it in front. Yeah. So I will. I will take. Um, um, I will take off until Friday, like until Saturday. I will um, be back on the weekend, basically. Yeah. Um, and what anime? <laughs> Uh, what anime I'm suddenly currently watching? I'm I'm watching um, also currently just at this very moment I'm watching Full Metal Alchemist. I've I've already watched it, but uh, I watched uh, I think I watched it like very back then, so I cannot even exactly remember, which makes me rewatch that. I watched Brotherhood first. And now I watched uh, I watched the original, which is um, a little bit, I mean, not trash talk, you know. It's also being uh, rated very high, but Brotherhood is being generally regarded as being uh, better. Yeah. Um, my taste is the original. Yeah. Also, I I loved I loved Brotherhood. Uh, like I I loved that too. Um, I would probably give it also a nine or a ten out of ten. But um, the first one is just my taste, you know, it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit more realistic, I feel, I feel, yeah, I mean, I don't know, yeah, it's, uh, I don't like if it's like too much of this funny things, you know, which are a little bit more unrealistic, so I want to, I want to have it a little bit more serious, 
I mean, maybe a little bit more dark, you might say, but I mean, it's not really, it's not really dark, dark, you know. Uh, it's an unpopular opinion, though. <laughs> I mean, many people also love the original, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's not, it's not the standard opinion. Yeah, it's true. Um, but yes. So, Attack on Titan, I was, I actually thought that there are like some seasons coming out. I only watched it until season two, like at the end, uh, until the end of season two. And uh, it was kind of cut it, cut it then, but I heard they did a new one, right? Um, so um, I was a little bit disappointed at the end of Act Two. <laughs> at the end of Act Two, I'm playing too much Slay the Spire. Um, I was a little bit unsatisfied at the end of uh, um, Season Two because there was like nothing more coming out. And it was kind of a very open end. So the last season is being released right now, but it's not finished, right? Or what? Or is it? The new season is super good. Would you recommend me to rewatch the entire thing, or should I just bad cultures at the end of season two? It's not finished yet, but it's get, it becomes better again. No, obviously I will watch season three as well. I'm just saying when it when it ended on season two, I think I waited a year and nothing happened, and it was kind of unsatisfying. Um, but yeah, maybe I just rewatch the entire thing. I just remember that it was nearly a little bit too brutal to me, honestly. Sometimes I really felt like. Oh, Oh, that is really borderline. I mean, you know, from a disgusting point of things, like it's very brutal. At and uh, but yeah, it's <laughs> hmm? season three made Attack on Titan best show ever. It has ten rated episodes. What do you mean ten rated? The new season is far more brutal than the previous ones. What? <laughs> it was brutal, right? Oh, has 10 out of 10 rated episodes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Higgs, Higgs Peaks also thinks it's brutal. No, it was it was good. Like it was. I'm, I'm not saying like I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was just a little bit uh, sad that it ended on season two. Like back then when I when I watched it, you know. Um, oh, it has like three episodes rated nine point nine on IMDb. And one on ten. Oh, okay. No, that's super insane. <laughs> It's like super insane. Nibble my son may ask what brutal means. Yeah, I don't know, whatever, like slasher, slasher, smasher. <laughs> A lot of blood, but also brutal scenes. Uh, um. Okay, interesting. No, good. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I definitely thought like back then that I would watch more if uh, there would be more, but there wasn't. But now you're telling me it uh, became really an even better. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, count me in. I will watch that. Um, is it on Netflix or is it like do I need to check it out on the internet? Probably not on Netflix, right? Otherwise, it would be. Where, where, where do you watch that stuff? Do you watch it in. I just nearly wanted to say, do you watch it uh, on TV, like on television? But then I thought, is is there something like television is still? Like, or am I just like, like, does television still exist? I mean, I I know I know like the mother of my of my wife has uh, has a television, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly what Nightmare says, yeah. Television still exists, but uh, people over 60 partly watch it. 
Okay, I see, I see. Okay. Um, so you watched it on a on a totally legitimate website. <laughs> okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay. So I just get myself some premium access at some of the anime sites and then I can just binge watch again. This is how I usually do it. Like every year I get myself and some access to some anime site and then I watch all the animes which came out that year. Okay. Um, good. Uh, that's very nice to hear. Yeah. That's very nice to hear. So yeah, but long story short, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Um, the hours I would, I usually um, do not invest while I'm doing all that stuff. Um, have I watched Hunter x Hunter? Yeah, the old one and the new one. I, by the way, like also maybe again I'm popular, but I like the old one more. But okay. Okay, so um, yeah, very nice, very nice. I, I see you're enjoying anime as much as I do. I also have some theory to that, but maybe that's wrong. But there's a lot of FSK 16, like at the old ones. And uh, if you want to bring it to a broader mass, I mean, as you also know from YouTube and from Twitch, a lot of people cater to the masses between 11 and 16 because they are always like hey papa mama buy me this and that i just saw it on the saw it on that show you know so apparently um uh, age groups between 11 and 16 are very much um, influencing the buying behavior um so they can buy products but at the same time they're also the easiest to be manipulated right so i'm not talking about the animes now but in general on youtube twitch and all that stuff so um movies anime or whatever like whatever it is usually it also targets between 11 and 16 like as an age group and well that's pretty bad if your if your movie is fsk 16 because then you actually do not target that age group so um you need to somehow make it friendly five plus yeah and yeah and a very a lot of the old animes just are not that a lot of the old animes are FSK 16, so they try to, yeah, basically get it into a way that it it can also be watched by younger people. Okay. Um. Oh, and my son says, yeah, we see that a lot in the game, in games too. Okay, interesting. I'm just ask, uh, want to ask, are strategy card games the only genres I play or do I enjoy also other types of uh, games in my free time? Um, yeah, mostly strategical, but sometimes I get sucked in into something else. I usually do not enjoy it that much, but uh, sometimes I get sucked in. Uh, for those who watched me playing HOTS, they know. Um, and then I get sucked in and usually the story goes like this. I play something which is not a strategical game or a card game. No, it's not even card game. Stra strategy in general, right? And then I play something and I realize I relatively suck at this game. And then my um, pride mode becomes active. My, my wrong pride mode becomes activated. And uh, I suddenly put into my head that I want to achieve something. And just get miserable by doing so. So, for example, in HOTS, I think I got uh, like I played, and somehow I was like gold, and I thought, okay, you can do better than those guys. And I was stuck, like uh, stuck in gold or something, and I, it was like super annoying to me. So I somehow put into my head to to be able to get to diamond, and I regretted it all the way, like straight up. I mean, I also streamed some of those, and I regretted it right away, and. Um, it was very <laughs> and the same i guess was for league of legends just an even in harder way like league of legends i kind of got sucked in when i worked at riot um uh one one and a half years ago and they kind of like my colleagues convinced me to to try out league of legends and i played it uh, a little bit and i got somehow like whatever bad silver or something and 
I thought, okay, now when you are already at there, they just should play it quickly to gold and then call it a day. And I, I somehow got caught into silver too. And it was so, like, I couldn't accept it, you know. I did, I, something in me told me, oh, you're investing too much time here. But something in me also told me, okay, you cannot, uh, <laughs> that's a personal thing now. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, so yeah, I... I had my whatever 200 or 300 hours of agony um, while trying to reach gold. Yeah, I guess I guess some of you will probably be familiar with that story. So I mean, not with my story, but that maybe maybe you had the same stuff. Yeah, uh, but it was never like deeply fulfilling. I mean, I don't know what else. Uh, games like Star Spy are deeply fulfilling, but for me personally, they fulfill me more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's um, yeah. Ah, Xandi says that's the danger with all PvP rate games. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because it's also. I mean, I only knew that gold was average, and I really want just wanted to. I I didn't want to end below average, you know. But I mean, to of course you have to keep in mind that. Yeah, yeah I mean these the, the guys are like Jeff Tank. These games they are younger than me. They have better re reactions. Um, it's actually pretty stupid of me to think in a way, but the competitive of my nature always says, okay, no, 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 <laughs> you can, you have to do it now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what I'm just, so the competitive aspect of games is what tends to drive me. Ah, no, no, I played a lot of games. But no, no, usually the competitive aspect is, is one, one part of the equation, usually quite a low one Unle until I think it becomes like there's some stress all but usually if, uh, the first whatever first 100 hours of a game is usually of non-competitive nature to me of course I try to do my best but it's not that I have to measure myself with other performances or something like this yeah. Hey Gisran, thanks so much for the sub. Very appreciated. What champs did I enjoy in, uh, most in League of Legends? Yeah, for the mercy of heaven. Yeah, playing against Garen was always like a big joy, big enjoyment for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you can control him very well and very nicely, but if you mess it up too often, he snowballs you to the wall, and you know that it was always up to you because. It's um, yeah, it's an immobile hero, yeah. So uh, that was pretty, and like you know, usually you won against him, but if you didn't, you was always like I, I always monster tilted because I knew I just missed like whatever one skill shot or didn't escape at the correct time, and now he goes, he gets mighty, and now you cannot really, um, yeah, you cannot really um, cage him any longer or whatever. But no, I own, I actually played Swain a lot, a lot. Yeah, uh, a lot. Okay. Hey, Nazis, thanks so much for your sub as well. Very much appreciated. So, yeah, I think, yeah, it was Swain top. No, no, every position. No, like there's like every position. Ba -ba yeah, not jungle, not jungle, but all the other positions, you can. I mean, it was also a different. Uh, yeah, it was uh, not uh, yeah, New Spain, partly. No, it, I think it was New Spain. Yeah. And. Um, but you could really, like, you you could play him in all roles. That that was so cool about him. Yeah. Um, oh, Silver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew I, I, I would take the trash talk here from my. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Okay. Mmm. So, good. What did I want to talk about? I wanted to talk, yeah, I mean, that of course. What did we talk about the upcoming plans? Yeah, um, let's do that. No, let's talk about... Okay, I have some things to, I wanted to talk about. So let's start with the... I, I, I wanted to very quickly count out the boss swaps we had in the silent games um so just for me personally 
so let's let's count the boss swaps uh, zero one um just always look at this <laughs> zero one uh um one one two one three one three two three 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 four 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 five four five five six five six 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 seven yeah seems we are currently six seven <laughs> boss swapping with the silent now nah, um i know i i know one game which i completely through just that's for me personally because it's not about the scoring here but it's about for like for me to understand yeah, whether we should adjust it you know and um what i'm saying is the six seven if i would have picked one different could have been also seven six but uh, whatever so apparently we're with boss for around 50 50 currently and without boss hope we are well you know um much better um what was it six seven out of 13 and we are 32 right so minus six is 26 out of 37 26 out of 37 is around 72 percent or whatever yeah um so apparently we are around 70 percent with boss swap sorry apparently we are 70% without boss swap and apparently we are around 50 with boss swap now what would we expect well we already thematized it if you do not do a boss swap it means that we had a better choice and a better choice than a standard choice i mean so you know if you have a, if you can take a common relic would you do a boss swap then uh, no you would take the common relic so only if you have good choices um only if you only have bad choice you would take the boss swap so what i'm saying is sometimes you have good choices then we play 70 percent if you have bad choices well we probably do not play 70 percent probably we do play 65 and now we can com com convert these 65 into a boss swap currently being at 50 50. <laughs> i don't know maybe we should less boss swap but yeah maybe not i mean it's a very 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 small sample so jd dutch freak wants to count as slime bosses i don't know is there a, is there an easy way to do that is there a fast way to do that or not how do you how can you count the slime boss How do you even see it? Ah, here. With arrow keys? Yo, you're right. Also, also how many slime bosses would we, would we expect? Over 50? Uh, 17 slime bosses. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. We can just count them. We, we can count them, it's okay. One... Two, three, four, five, six. Goes faster than expected. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh, I am a defect. No, guys, why do you... Am I... Okay. Now I'm slightly mad. I think now I'm slightly mad.
Guys, when we did the boss swap thing, wait, did it reset? Did it reset? Wait, 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 wait. I don't understand. Wait, did I? How did we count the boss swaps? No, it just resetted, right? Okay, this is stupid, guys. Okay, I hate this. Okay, okay, I do it again. I, okay, now, yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. This is stupid. What? Twenty-five on silent. Hmm? Was it like on all different characters or what was that? Oh no no no, the, the last games were silent. So how, 25 or how many? Okay 25 you counted with me, oh thanks guys. You, you, you just saved me a lot of a lifetime. So 25 you say and we expect uh, 17 yeah? Um, yeah that's uh, a lot. <laughs> what? Oh! when you consider that some runs didn't get to the act one boss uh -huh, man you're right um we have to also deduct the ones which are not mm, i see so one and two three uh i see what you're saying yeah three um four five uh, five didn't get to the act one boss so what you're saying is basically that we face the slime boss um, 24 times out of 45. And so JD Dutchrick says, so facing slime boss gives a good win percentage. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's true. Um, I'm wondering because um, if, I, if I check our first games we had. Also, here we died against the slime boss, you know. <laughs> he also died against the slime boss. <laughs> nah, I think here we didn't die against the slime boss. Yeah, that was that was fine. But I know, no, I, I, as a matter of fact, I know that this one was also slime boss. As a matter of fact, I know that this one was slime boss because I, I know that I ranted on it. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay, whatever. Also, so apparently we um. Yeah, yeah, it was the first six games or something, and I also at that point I did even less know to handle this line was as I do now. So, um, so what you're saying is we have a high frequency of facing slime bosses, yeah? Interesting. Interesting. We will see. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't uh, be. I see a lot of these final records. Don't be afraid because I can already like a preview or a preview or whatever. I can already tell you like a plans, plans to come uh, is another 50 silent runs. Yeah. And I now do it in the reverse order because I first wanted actually to talk about win rates or about general recap. And then I wanted to talk about uh, what I have in mind as next. And I'm saying that you do not need to talk about the current wins because I will not do another 50. I mean, as a matter of fact, I will do another 50, but um, I will, I will up count them. Yeah. So, tschüss. Um, I will, I will count them up. Yeah. So I will not make a new of 50, but uh, I will count uh, from 100. And, um, And the reason for that, well, starting as 51, yeah, uh, starting like 32 out of 100, yeah, exactly, like um, making 100 games, and um, it, it, yeah, combine the samples, but also for a bigger sample, and this is something I just wanted to talk about, so, um, yeah, also, Talking about win rates now, okay? So, and this is like a little bit this theoretical part I was talking about, yeah? So, the first question or one one of the things, because I've, I've been thinking about it a lot in the, lab, in the past two days, right? So, like, what did we achieve? And um, how does it compare? And also other things, because, um, because there's this thing, can you even measure good 
For me, it's the can you measure good sled the uh, good sled the spire gameplay, right? And like, what is the metric? Like, what kind of metric could be there, if any, to measure good sled the spire gameplay? Yeah? Objectively, like, is there an objective way to measure whether you play good sled the spire or not? And if so, what would the metric be? And Honestly, I think it's very clean. I mean, also for me, that's, that's I mean, for me, for me, that is uh, clearly the um, for me, it's clearly win rate. But that's, I mean, I'm kind of feeling a little bit embarrassed to uh, talk about that because I think actually that should be very obvious, right? I mean, if you think about okay. What uh, what kind of measurement could be to measure good Slay the Spire gameplay? I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't even talk about it if, like, it seems that some people think it's 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 not possible to have an objective Slay the Spire um, uh, measurement and uh, for good gameplay. And I think. I mean, I don't know. I also know that many people know that win rate is is the uh, the correct measurement, but I also know that there are still some people doubting that. And so I have been f thinking about that, right? And no, seriously. I mean, it got me busy to the point that I actually thought about it, and I came to the conclusion that maybe people are doubting win rate because. It's, and this is actually difficult to create a, a statistically, a statistically significant win rate, and not only that, but also to close it down, right? So um, it's not easy to come up with your real win rate, your genuine real win rate. That is number one, and number two. Very often, people are trying to. Uh, manipulated in a positive way so people get confused yeah so mm, no no uh, but this exactly Bierbauch says win rate is the right metric but winning doesn't mean you played well correctly but what I'm what I'm saying is I think it's very um, if you win one game or let's say few games um, and let's say you high roll then it doesn't mean that you played well necessarily but if you do it over a very big sample of course, it's, it converts into meaningless, yeah. And so, mm, what Kasselem says, quality of play can vary a lot over a large sample size. Yeah, but then you take the average. I mean, yes, quality of play can uh, differ. So, but you see already, right? There's a lot of discussion about this, and that's the reason why I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, how to create? Um, I mean, how to <laughs> how to find out your real win rate and. For people who watch my channel, they know that I try everything in my in my power in order to find out our real win rates. No matter what it is, I mean, it's um, usually if you want to try find out your real win rate, you take a specific sample. I will talk about this in a minute. You take a specific sample, and I mean, preferably the sample size is as big as possible. Yeah. So those two premises. Yeah, if you, I give you an example. So. If you take a very low sample, let's say you take a sample of uh, 10 games, right? Then you can create very high win rates by just high rolling them. Yeah, so the I mean, I'm really trying my best. Like everything I do is to find out my real win rate, my personal real, real win rate. Not uh, converted, not like a high roll, my real win rate. Okay, so one way is to take a very small sample to manipulate, right? So the bigger the sample, the more meaningful the sample is. I'm not saying 50 is meaningful, but it's more meaningful than 10. I think where it, be, where it starts to become really meaningful is 100 and onwards, okay? Um, but I just didn't have the time. Like, I counted all my games. What can I do, right? Um, it's not that I don't uh, play a lot of Slay the Spire, you know? Um, I mean, I play a lot of Slay the Spire and I count all my games. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's actually quite, um, yeah, you know. So... So the higher, the bigger the sample size, the better it is. Uh, preferably, if I could prefer, like if I could choose, I would rather like to 
you know, take 100. I, I will come to that in a second. The other way is to play a lot of samples and then just cherry pick the, the good one. So let's say um, I let's let's uh, say I, I do whatever uh, 50 uh, game samples. I'm not saying anybody does that. I'm just saying you could manipulate like this, right? I could play uh, 10, 50 game samples, and then I just uh, could just cherry pick myself the best one. Kind of saying, um, not saying that I high rolled the 150 sample, but just saying. Uh, that I was in my bed that that I played a game that I played my best game in the best sample and the other samples I just uh, uh, practiced or I just uh, skew, skew, spewed around you know um, I didn't take it series or whatever in order to justify that I take exactly the one cherry picked sample size right um, so and I want to showcase that uh, from an example in our last 50 games okay so, um, and I think this is like a very uh, important lesson, you know, how you can actually manipulate and what kind of a difference it is to take a rolling sample or a predefined sample, okay? Mm. So, um, the last 50 games, okay? I, I just closed it down and then I answer questions. So, the last 50 games with the silent, okay? We played 32 out of 50, which is like a 64% win rate, okay? That would be my pretty fine sample size. I pretty fine that I want to play 50, I played 50, I won 32 games, that makes 64%, okay? So, if I could choose a rolling sample, okay? Like, when I just play games and then just I just cherry pick myself a very specific sample, what would my win rate be? Now... I'm pretty sure I can find an even better sample than the one I just show you. But if I just, and this is the beauty about selected sample sizes, I can, for example, just cut the last five games. One, two, three, four, five. That were five losses. And I can also cut the first three games, you know. So if I scroll down, um, these were the three first games we played. We lost and we lost and we lost, right? So I lost the first three. I, I also lost the last five. Now, the, la the first three... Um, if I deduct the eight games, yeah, it basically means we well still won 32, but now not out of 50, but we now won 32 out of uh, 42. Yeah, and you can already see that is a higher win rate than 75 percent, right? So if I would cherry pick, I could easily say, okay, look. The first three games I practiced, but unfortunately I lost, but they were practice games. And the last five games, I obviously wasn't trying hard because I was already kind of burned out from the entirety of the games. So I didn't really try hard. I also was tired. I also was a little bit annoyed. Maybe whatever, like maybe my, uh, I don't know, whatever. You can come up with all kind of things. Yeah. Maybe I played too quickly. I don't know. These games. We probably also, I think, I think we played five or four games in one day, right? So also much quicker than you. And I could come up with all kind of excuse, you know. But the reality is probably I just down low road, yeah. So the difference between a specific, a specified sample size in our last sample, and about our uh, like uh, between a cherry picked sample size is sixty four to seventy six, okay. So by cherry picking, and not even hardly cherry picking, just like hey, I just say the last the last games don't count, the first games don't count. I can improve my win rate by twelve percent. Yeah. So um, that's all. I mean, you can make out of that whatever you want, but I just want. I just try for those who don't know that yet that they see how how significant of a difference that is yeah and um, yeah basically yeah some people also don't know that we take predefined samples and they always say hey look only because they played or only because I played over 50 games this and that win rate is completely irrelevant because I could have just massively high rolled and that is the reason why I take 
Hey. Doch, hier unten suchst du, dachte ich, oder? Ist hier, ne? 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 Okay, dann ist sie irgendwo. Okay. Oh je. Ähm. So. What's my point? Ja. Yeah. Ähm. Um, oh yeah, about this hero. Okay. So, I think those people who, who are. Maybe not everybody knows that we take pretty fine samples. Ja. Yeah. So, uh, but then again, I guess most know. Um, and to just to just fill the bridge, um, to um, to just uh, yeah, uh, but how do you say to bridge the topic or um, to tell you why I'm actually talking about this is uh, or how this relates to the plans to come. So, the beauty about us taking predefined samples, also where we actually say beforehand that we will now do a sample size of 50 and then we count each single game and between a rolling sample is well, that this is reproducible, yeah, so I don't have a problem to reproduce this win rate again, because I genuinely believe this is my real win rate and the reason why I can believe that is because my measurements are hopefully on spot, yeah so If somebody, let's say, doubts such a sample, I can just say, yeah, okay, I just play another 50, you know, because this is my real win rate. Yeah? And I don't doubt that because it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty fine sample. So unless I massively high rolled in this sample, yeah, I can just um, reproduce that uh, result very easily. Which is, by the way, not the case if you may take a very specified sample size, like a cherry-picked sample size. Example, somebody, I mean, the, the biggest examples are probably, I don't know, um, ah, whatever, win streaks would be, for example, one example, right? Like, um, somebody plays, yeah, even me on the Watcher, yeah, I play 18-0 on the Watcher, can I reproduce it immediately? Well, probably not, <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably not, because I probably high rolled the 18-0, because... What a surprise, I don't play with the Watcher with 100%. Yeah, who would have thought? So, um, but the, the other win rates, you know, the win rates I genuinely believe we have um, are just reproducible. And um, at the same time, and this is the next thing, I also think that 50 is too low of a sample size. I just picked 50, not as a magical number or something, but just because it's quite a lot of time investment. Yeah, so I thought 50 is a compromise, a sad compromise, but I'm not willing to commit myself to 100 games, you know. Um, so are 100 games better than 50? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no question about this, yeah. I mean, if you can just snap the fingers and can do 100, 100 is way better than 50. And, but because I, and I was wondering, yeah, I was wondering what's going on here, and do I want to play another 50, yeah, to fill, for example, 100 games? And I already said like two days ago, right, that I can like, for example, I can see that definitely with the silent. I enjoy the silent currently, so I do not have a problem to play more games with the silent. Just not right now. Uh, I, I want to do some other stuff in between. Um, I really played probably a little bit too much Lazy Spire. Yeah, I always see it when I am a little bit annoyed at the start, for example. I start Act 1 and some garbage happens and I, I become annoyed and this is when I feel that I'm uh, overplaying a game yeah and um, but yeah so I can definitely see myself increasing the samples and obviously the right thing to do is not to play another 50 but if I play another 50 I can as well just count it up yeah so uh, I will definitely count it up here and um, that's also the plans to come uh, I also feel 100 games is also much cleaner because well Mach mal. Um, so, the 100 games are, um, I think, also much cleaner for. Um, let's say it's also not so easy to calculate the percentage out of 50 games, right? There are 50 games. We win some. I mean, it should be relatively easy. But you know, if you if you played 100 games, to figure out the percentage is very easy, right? So, I think that could also be significant for some people as well. Okay. 
So, um, now to the question. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about the long talk, but I think it needs to be understood. Yeah. Um, and one says 100 seems like a good number for accurate win rate. Yeah, uh, here again, only if it's a specified, not a rolling. If you take a rolling 100, like last 100, you know, if I take last 100, it will go up and down, it will go up and down, and then I can just pinpoint the up, you know. So, but if you, I think if you predefine it, if you say, okay, I stop now, and now I count 100, and even if I lose my first games, I still keep on counting. Yeah, that's, um, that's very accurate. Also about, yeah, somebody asked about that. Like, um, <laughs> there's also about the game length. Now look, um, I would never ever get to the idea if somebody else would have a higher win rate than I would have, right? I mean, I would just congratulate him. Like, I have no problem with that, you know? And, you know, if he takes twice as long for the games, I would never get even the idea to, to point out, hey, I know not many people are doing that, but some haters are doing that, right? I would, I would never get to the idea in a, <laughs> in a non-time limited game to point out that yes, he has a higher win rate, so therefore he makes a better decisions instead of Spire. But I, I can do my runs in four hours instead of in ten hours. I would never even get the idea. Like, where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, that must be some envious. I, mean, I don't know. Like, hey, wow, hey, look, yeah. I um, I mean, what I'm saying is, who even says that three hours is better? Who even says that two hours is better? I mean, I can see that ten minutes are, are better. So if somebody says, hey, I don't have like a high win rate, but I clash Slay the Spire in ten minutes, I mean, that's okay. That's different. But, I mean, what I'm saying is, I mean, many of you will probably also play Slay the Spire in whatever. Two hours in a run, two and a half hours. Some will do also runs in one and a half hour, maybe in one hour. And, um... Do you really have the feeling, I mean, or if you try it out and you just play the runs twice as long, that your win rate skyrockets currently, suddenly, right? And if it does, I mean, it's good, right? I mean, but it's still, what I'm saying is a trade-off, right? I mean, it's not, it's, it's not going one direction, but uh, if you take longer in your games, it also means you get more mental exhaustion, you get more, you become more mentally fatigued. You can also not play that many games, yeah? I mean, there are also a lot of negative things, um, attached to that uh, which i think many people do not realize sometimes uh, ma many do many do it's it's usually with the vocal it's usually a vocal minority so i don't even know whether i want to talk about it too much here okay um Inflammation says life coach has the most meaningful win rates that uh, there are in the community. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, um, but even the samples, I mean, I try, but uh, there, uh, even in the 50 game samples, we saw uh, a lot of uh, downswings and upswings, which probably influence some samples, probably even need more games. Yeah, that's also my conclusion. I think the win rates we currently have are probably every character plus minus 5%, maybe 10, but probably rather plus minus 5, I would think. Um, and yeah, if we play more games, we will probably get a clearer, clearer look at uh, what we have. Yeah. yeah, also, also about these. Um, there's uh, there are some questions about the comparableness um, and about what other uh, streamers do or whether we can compare. I mean, the one thing is a direct comparison, but. 
not I mean okay first of all some people uh, were saying ah but uh, there are no direct comparables from other streamers and that's not true yeah that is not true they, there are a lot of other streamers who are doing win rate checks yeah um the Baylor lot sometimes play like uh, or usually plays um and not always but sometimes makes like a win rate check where you can see uh, again not as a competition but just like as an information like maybe maybe we can see what kind of classes we high rolled which classes we low rolled where the differences lie so for example Baylor lot uh, um, is a very good defect player and um, then we can say okay uh, maybe we can learn the one or the other thing from that um, and also uh, talking about sample sizes I mean uh, uh, jobs for example is also making a significant I mean not significant we said like we want a little bit more for significance but I mean th what he's doing is basically this he is um, I mean, he's counting his games right and he's playing 200 which means 50 from each class and it's also uh, uh, and this is cool it's a specified it's a specified amount of games right so wh what I'm saying is it's a it's a pretty fine um, pretty fine sample so he starts um, he says I start at point zero and I start to count my games at point zero and after um, yeah whatever after 200 games or maybe a little bit more um, he will stop his challenge right but after all he collected 50 um, predefined samples with each character, yeah, and that is uh, a direct comparison, yeah. It's um, or you can directly compare that because we are doing nothing um, different. We are doing exactly the same, yeah. Predefining fifty and then playing them out. Yeah, there's this that you become better at the end or whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Um, you see, it's... I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it's, it makes too much of a difference. I think it's quite too complacent to say, okay, look, I can take two sample sizes. I can, I can play one sample size, I can play the second one, you know, and... If the second one is worse than the first one, do you know which one I count? Yeah, of course I count the first one, right? Because in the second one, I can again come up with like excuses X, Y, why it wasn't, you know. And if I have a way higher, or, uh, not way higher, but if I have a higher percentage, well, then I can just tell you that I just got better. Kind of the silent thing, you know. In the first three games, ah, we weren't really on spot, you know. In the first three games here, yeah, of course. Eh? I mean, I start the performance, play the silent once again I'm a little bit cold and then I play three games and I lose all these three games coincidence yeah so I'm um, having like a win rate of whatever um, uh, like 64 in this but uh, if you do not count the three games it's a little bit more so how unlikely is that that we lose three games with having such a high win rate? probably we just learned in the three games right so let's play another three games because the first three games don't count. I mean, this is so safe lying, it's unbelievable. I mean, even if my performance or my win rate was not 64% in the first three games, yeah, it was probably at least 60. So what do you mean, like, how do you mean it's cues? Do you really think I was so much of a bad player in these three games? I doubt so. I really doubt so because 
we already had the old performance with the silence, right? 56%. Though before the before the buffs. And the buffs on the silent were significant. Were of significant nature. So, but what I'm saying is, if you were a 56% player before, right? And now we take a new... Uh, like, now I'm playing these three games after the buffs. No. Probably the reality is... Well, probably the reality is I was indeed a little bit weaker. Probably at this point I was a 60% winner rate player. Probably. Yeah, instead of 65. But that I lost these games is not because of the 5% difference. The reason why I lost these three games is just because I lost them. You know? So, I do see no problem in counting them. Absolutely not. I mean, the, Nguyen basically said something about um, you might become much better in, within the sample. Well, if you're not just starting off Slade Aspire, you know, um, at some point your, your power curve doesn't go like this unless it's a completely new character but even even not yeah probably if it's a completely new character maybe um, but that's about it yeah and completely new character doesn't mean few buffs on the silent or like few buffs on the defect yeah let's just try not to lie to ourselves too much yeah Yeah, at 100 games, we are also sure. Um, I'm also not... Um, yeah. No, no, I, I heard what you said, that we split it in 50 and then we did, did, did use the best 50, the worst 50. I think it just becomes too complex. I mean, people are already having a hard time to understand what we are doing here. I mean, it's not too different, difficult, but, you know, people, I mean, if people have a problem to understand how, how big the difference between a predefined and a, um, and the cherry pick performances i think people will have a lot of problems understanding that we take that you take few 50 game samples then we or we split the 50 game samples, then we deduct the worst one the best ones i don't know I, i'm i'm pretty happy with just filling to 100 and that about it um Their terms or what? Yeah. Hmm. Turn the Hmm? Saga says, I, I think life coach just called some of you stupid. No, I definitely did not do that. Uh, I, I de No, seriously, I, I definitely didn't do that. Like I said, it's hard to grasp for some people. Uh, I genuinely believe that people who are watching me, they are also watching me because of good gameplay. And um, people who watch me because of good gameplay also understand what, I, what I'm doing here. Yeah, But I'm also talking about people who are not watching the channel on a permanent basis. Yeah. I just hate it to be not accessible to, yeah, I mean, generally, you know, um, 
if other people want to compare and they don't exactly know what we are doing here and they're saying and it's also like also kind of shady like nobody knows exactly i don't know no i think it's very clean to just say also there's specific like cherry picked or predefined predefined is well much much better than cherry picked and also just much more honest so we take predefined ones and then we realize okay 100 is much better than 50 so let's make predefined 100. Oh, by the way, the third manipulation uh, possibility was to play multiple sample sizes, right? And as a matter of fact, we didn't do that. Uh, I mean, yeah, with the silent we did two, whereas the first one is 56 before uh, the buffs. It's uh, it's to be argued that the 56 before the buffs is better than 64 now. Yeah. Um, with the ironclad we played one uh, uh, one. Um, performance and one only with the watcher we played one and one only both predefined as well both predefined as well um, with the defect we actually played two yeah so someone could also argue if you take the la if you take the predefined 100 on the defect it's only 48 yeah sure um, that's the only thing I will I will definitely also play the defect 100 yeah because um, I really believe that in the first 50 we sucked hard like really i mean i played all kind of garbage also with misconceptions um but uh, it's true yeah we, we play two performances the first performance doesn't indicate that the second 56 are genuine so i will definitely also feel the i mean definitely it's not a 100 percent promise but if i will still play slay spire at that point after the after filling the silent games um we can also fill the defect games most likely because we basically did this right we played the 50 on 40 percent um and then we said okay this cannot be let's play another 50 so these 56 percent are not so clean but it's pretty fine and it could also be higher by the way yeah it could also be higher it could be higher it could be lower the only way to find out is to play another 50 pretty fine yeah okay so um, Yeah, also Blil says I should not stress myself too much over that um, because it's already, yeah, um, you know, I do not have a problem with that to play more games because I genuinely believe these are my win rates. So if I would think, okay, I faked everything, maybe I would have a problem with that. But as things stand, I enjoy to play the game. I was thinking about it the last two days, whether I still enjoy the game enough to for example commit another month but the answer is just yes specifically the silent i have uh, urge to continue to play the silent i still have the feeling i did not figure out everything yeah um i also just enjoy to play the silent currently okay i enjoy these shift builds a lot as you also also know from my first 50 game performance on the silent pre 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 buff um so for me, it's not a problem to play another one, like another predefined sample size, because I genuinely believe that these these win rates I displayed in the last, in the past, are also <laughs> my win rates. You know, it's uh, it's no problem. Yeah, we can, yeah uh, I do not have the feeling. It would be different if I would have the feeling that I manipulated something, but I don't. So. Hmm? Blem says there isn't a true metric for best player in this game. Yeah, and I'm telling you there is a metric for best player in the game. If you define a best player as making the most uh, winning decisions, then win rate is your indicator for being the best player in the game. I do it like for my, my own fun, you know. Um, but, but claiming that there is no measurement to measure good, good gameplay in Slay the Spire is just, it's just wrong. Yeah, of course you can measure good gameplay in Slay the Spire. Now, whether somebody can now make their own goals 
yeah, standing on one leg while scratching your head and achieving a higher win rate. Of course you can do that, but it's just generally not accepted. And you can also see that, um, like, <laughs> and this logic you can this logic you can also see at what other players do. Yeah? There are some players who go for win streak. There are some players who go for win rates. Yeah, there are not many players who go for uh, standing on one leg while scratching the head, maximize the win rate, or for some other weird things. Yeah, because it doesn't really make sense. Of course, you can go for that, but um, it will be apparent to everybody that it's just a nonsense performance, uh, a nonsense challenge, or whatever, and then they won't do that. Yeah. Um, so no, I think it's definitely possible. Yeah. Mm. But of course, it's difficult to have. Um, no, I, I don't even think it's so. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but I think like that you say, hey, like in this game, you cannot say who's good or not. I mean, that's just very uh, arbitrary. Uh, mm. Now, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, as you all know, I'm working hard on my win rates, yeah? So, um, I do not have a problem if somebody else is better than me. 0, 0.0, yeah? But um, what I do have a problem with, uh, with is if I'm trying very hard and I achieve some top win rates on a specific character or whatever, and then people try to diminish this uh, accomplishment by saying something like, yeah, but I really thought a lot. Yeah, my my shame on me that I thought so much on my runs. Sorry about that. Like, I have to excuse myself. Or um, if people say, okay, yeah, the win rate is very high, but um, there is no real measurement, you know, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's okay. I don't have a problem. You know, like, I mean, yeah, it's it's also very obvious, I feel. Yeah. It's, um, statements like that just confuse me a little bit. Mm. What was the next point? The, I talked about the recap. We counted out the silence. We counted out the silence. Or oh, am I already? I just answer a few more questions and then we continue with the next point. Mm. I mean, it would, by the way, also a big life I, if I would say I don't care about those things. Obviously, I try to get them. Uh, obviously, I try uh, to min max everything, and I super try hard to maximize my win rates. Like I want to win the games in the spire. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, it would be. It would be a big life. I would say uh, I do not care. I play for fun. I play also for fun, but I also play for you know winning games in the spire. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Matter of fact. What a surprise. Mm. I thought I asked the plan is 50 silent, uh, more silent runs. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I also, by the way, always try to find it out in dialogue, right? So that is also the reason why I'm, for example, recapping this thing and also talking about the upcoming plans. Um, also to hear your opinion, right? I mean, if you think, oh, something is very flawed in what I think or like in these sample sizes, how I want to create my genuine win rate. Yeah, um, I just want to communicate it yeah? because it's not like, hey, I'm just doing that and I'm ignoring everything else. But... Um, if you think something is flawed in the way I count, please let me know, right? Because I mean, I mean, not a little bit flawed, but I mean, if you say, like, if you, for example, have the feeling that I manipulate my stats because I want to display a better win rate than I have, please let me know, and also please let me know why. Yeah, where you have, the, where you would 
have the feeling that I do that stuff. Uh, What I think about win rate with glitches, yeah, I think I think glitches are a different category. Uh, I mean, you cannot definitely not compare uh, uh, glitch runs without uh, like with glitch less runs. Uh. Mm-hmm, okay. Yeah, I see. Mm. Ribanya says, what evaluation on the silent boss swap was it in the end? Was it uh, as low as 90 gold? At the end, it was around 100. We said against the Guardian, we never boss swap. I know I boss swap in just like recently one of the last games against the Guardian. That was this game? No. Yeah, it was this game. I boss swapped here because the options were really, really, really lousy. But, um, um, but yeah, we were as low as 100 gold against slime boss slash hexa ghost. And against the Guardian, we basically wanted to never boss swap. I think that was the end of the evaluation. Yeah. He had around 50% with boss swap. Probably low roll there. But yeah, we probably... I mean... Maybe we should put it to 90 gold. Probably we should... Probably, probably we should put it to 90 gold, yeah. Also, I don't know. It feels so weird to me. Um, I can nearly not believe that this should be correct. Yeah, putting it to 90 gold, but I guess, yeah. I mean, cannot ignore that we lost a lot of the games with the boss swap. And in this game, it was certainly due to the boss swap. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think the silent auto benefits a little bit less from energy than I, I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's true. Yeah, so... Yeah, maybe 90 gold, uh, not against Guardian. Against Guardian, probably 60 gold, and against Hexagos and Slimebrush, probably 90 gold, yeah. Slim dresses, I think most of the people here know what they are watching and appreciate the work you're putting into the runs. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I'm talking about the vocal minority very often, um, which is an internet phenomenon. I should probably not do that too often, yeah. No, you're right, yeah. I mean, I, I also hear so many, uh, so much appreciation and um, yeah, very often, yeah, it's, it's also very nice for me, you know, because um, no, I, I can definitely hear you. Like that's, that's definitely also the feeling I do have. Yeah. Piercing Veil versus the Silent a glitch. Piercing Veil versus the Silent, sorry? What do you mean? Hey, Hips, Hicks, 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 thanks very much for the sub. Hmm. 
Yeah, basically what Crimson Blur says. Um, if you have to talking about the piercing veil against the bosses, um, maybe there is something about um, uh, an explanation to that. Yeah. So uh, these are not um, glitches. I mean, they are very well intended. So we okay. We are talking about the piercing veil. The piercing veil is a card which reduces the strength for one turn. Yeah. And what the what the awakened one does is in his awakened turn he basically makes tabula rasa right so he just wishes away everything and how it works with the piercing veil is you can weaken him and if he wishes away all the uh, all the effects he will also whiff away the strength debuff yeah the the strength gain in the next turn so he will receive a buff gain eight strengths in the next turn but also losing strength in this turn and you just wish them he just whiffs them away and um, hmm, but he keeps buffs oh yeah yeah, yeah. he 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 whiffs uh, oh but he keeps buffs okay interesting you mean he he keeps his strengths buff okay how how does it work then he he whiffs also this the plus strengths after turn is it like is it like a debuff or how does it work then the Veil Shackles, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay, they are debuff, okay, I see, hmm, interesting, hmm, I mean, for example, the heart is doing it exactly different, the heart is basically saying, I just whiff away the minus strengths, but I keep the buff, I, I keep the plus strengths, you know, that's pretty unfair, <laughs> I mean, unfair, unfair, I mean, but you know what I'm saying, interesting, hmm, Mm-hmm. Okay. If he keeps bust, I mean, it's very well intended. I mean, that's for certain. Um, I mean, they could have easily removed it very often, but it's just an integral part of the gameplay that you can actually with the um, with the piercing whale. Uh, it's also very skillful. Yeah, it's not. It's very difficult to to uh, pull that off. And um, but yeah, so it's it's coded as a debuff. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm very certain that it's an intended mechanic. Yeah. It's also like a, a, a very skillful and also a fun mechanic, I feel. Yeah, because if you really pull it off, it's really rewarding. But it's very hard to pull it off. I mean, without well-laid plans or something, it's like really hard to pull it off. So, but yeah, it's definitely an integral part of the gameplay. Very certain about that. No. Um. Hmm. Darkest dungeon is more unfair than Slay the Spire. I didn't have the feeling that the uh, darkest dungeon was uh, more unfair. I just felt it more more grindy. That that was all. Yeah. I mean, you cannot even die in you cannot even die in darkest dungeons. <laughs> yeah, um, Crimson Blood tried darkest dungeon and didn't like it at all. Yeah, same. When I played it 30 hours, I didn't even or 35 hours, I didn't even lose a single character even once. Hmm. The Crimson Blood says. I, I sort of didn't get the hype. It's just a grind fest. Well, yeah, I mean, here you have your answer. The answer lies within the question, Crimson. You know that there are like I idle clickers being rated at 98%, you know, like games where you only click a button all the time. And where you can maybe also do in-game purchases, in-game purchases, where you can actually increase your clicking speed for real money. And you guessed what, and you guessed right, people are buying those enhancements so yeah <laughs> so now what i'm simply saying is grindy doesn't mean bad for everybody it just means bad for me for example yeah um, says 
that feels unfair there's absolute strategy in darkest dungeon 100 percent 100 percent i just i didn't say it's like i i okay i just explained why grindy is not a negative thing i'm saying they are also idle clickers i'm not saying darkest dungeon is an idle clicker i didn't say that i said grindy is not necessarily negative for everybody and as an example for that i actually mentioned idle clickers yeah. okay um no maybe i maybe i misframed no worries no worries um Oh, what? Um, oh, if, if 13 heroes died, uh, you lose, or if you didn't finish the game after 93 weeks. I didn't know that. I didn't play. I, I, I accidentally uh, deleted my, <laughs> my save file. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah. Mm, good. Yeah, I, I did it on stream. It was pretty hilarious. I played that game, like, again, like, we played it 38. We already leveled everything up. We were already like I think in the last level, and uh, I, I misclicked something. Like there's the letter, and you have to click the letter in order to load the game. But if you misclick, you can also delete your game. And well, I deleted my game. Uh, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, is there a clip to it? No, there's. Really Auf Wiedersehen. Yeah. But that was pretty. No, no, it wasn't too bad because. Um, I, I didn't want to really continue play uh, to uh, the, the play, so that that was okay. Um, misclick? No, we were doing fine. We again, like uh, we didn't lose a single hero. Um. Okay. Uh, what was was? Uh, yeah, okay. Also, what did I, uh, the recap? I did a recap. I did also we also did the boss recap. We also did the slime boss recap. Yeah, so it turned out in half of our games we faced the slime boss. No, more, more. It was 34 out of 45. So apparently slime boss is more often than the other. The slime boss as an egg one boss for us was more often than both other bosses combined. <laughs> um, so... Um, so we did the recap. We also talked about upcoming plans. On Saturday, we will, as the latest on Saturday, but probably on Saturday, I mean, maybe it itches me too hard and I have to jump into the gameplay, but probably on Saturday, we um, we finish our um, silent performance um, by basically just continuing to count until two, until 100, actually creating a, a pretty fine 100 game sample on the silent. I think um, that's like very, very nice. I'm looking forward for that. Yeah, and that is also at the same time the upcoming plans for the next month. Yeah. Um, I guess it will usually, in average, I think I play two games. So it will probably be around three to four weeks, depending on our pace, but probably three weeks. Some theory. Yes, we did some theory on the win rate and why our win rates are most likely genuine. Yeah. Um, so this is also short stream. Was there a short stream? How long? One and a half? No, oh, okay, short stream also check mark. Hmm. AMA. We also did that, I think. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Yeah. Hmm, when does the 51st run start? Probably on Saturday. Maybe on Friday. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably on Saturday. Yeah. Also, I'm already putting it early. I should really take some days off. I mean, not only because, but there's also a lot of stuff I want to, like, I wanted to do an XCOM campaign. I wanted to like watch some animes. I'm actually quite behind, as it seems. I didn't even know. I mean, I saw somewhere like Attack on Titan 4, but I was not really informed on that. So I really have to get a little bit back to real life. <laughs> real life, okay. Um, no, but I, I have to um, 
chill out and do uh, have to do some spire non-related things so that I can come in back with full force and full power into the spire again. Ah yeah yeah yeah. Ah yeah yeah yeah. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching and um, yeah, um, we see each other uh, still this week. And uh, yeah, let's see what's online. I saw uh, I saw Ref is like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, Revelation is trying a little bit iron ironclad, did I see that right? Yeah, did he, did he try uh, his hands on the ironclad a little bit now? That's cool. Uh, so who can I host? Ascension 20 in sleepiness. Accidental ASMR, what? Okay. Hmm. Uh, but why, why not? Okay. Um. Oh, he got too tilted uh, because he lost the streak or what? Oh yeah, it was good gameplay anyways. Oh. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy!